God is good. All the time, God is good, so they say. Uh, I believe that. How many people believe it? I tell you what, I'm excited about the presence of God. I'm excited about what God's about to do, amen? I, I can hardly contain myself because it, it's just so amazing to step into the presence of God, for God to be able to touch us and meet with us. You know, I don't know about you, but do you expect for God to touch you today? Do you, or do you just come to, to a place where you feel you've got to do something, go to church, whatever it is? I, I thank God that it's, it's bigger than that, amen? I thank God that it's better than that. I thank God that God can touch us. And I want to say this, I make no excuses today for the simplicity of what I'm going to share. But the simplicity thing that I'm going to share today is so profound that it can set you free. That it can change your life forever. How many people believe that this word can change our life forever? It is an amazing word. We're talking about breaking the fear of intimidation. God has given to us gifts and weapons to destroy the weaknesses of our flesh. One of our biggest problems is not the devil, it's our flesh. The enemy works with our flesh. He uses our emotions. He grabs hold of the weakness part of our life and tries to build on that so that he can get his way in our lives. But I thank God that God has given us weapons to destroy the weakness of our flesh, to break fear and intimidation and anything else that tries to stop us from our destiny, from our God-given calling. So, Father, today we come in Jesus' name. Father, we ask you by your Spirit that you just open this Word to us, open the kingdom to us, open the victory to us, open everything that you've made available to us, open it to our understanding that, that Lord, we can grasp it, that we can grab a hold of it, that we can bring it into our own life, bring it into our living, bring it into our now, so that we can use the weapons that you've given to us to destroy the enemy. And Father, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory, and everybody said, Amen. The Word of God says, If you abide in my word, it says this in John 8, 31 through to 32, If you abide in my word, if you live in my word, if you take my word and, and make it yours, if you if you allow that word to become real to you, but if you, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. I believe that, you know, how many people really want to be free to be able to be everything? How many ever have felt intimidated and shy? Any, anybody here, and I don't want shows of hand, I'm, I'm putting my to all of these because I was once very, very shy. And that held me back and it stopped the, 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 that which was within me to come out of me, the, the, the strength that was in me. I, I lived in weakness. I lived in fear. I lived in intimidation. There was a lot of things that, that caused that to happen, but that's how I lived. But I needed somebody to break that. I needed something there to, to help me. And I found out that inside me, there was a giant of a man. I found out that inside me there was a, there was a champ. I found out that inside of me that, that there was a victor part of me that I'd never seen before. And as I rose up, I, I sensed uh, that victory of Jesus Christ. Before you can overcome or break strongholds in your life, you must know the truth. The truth will make you free. The answer is already in the Word. This book is the greatest how-to. It's the greatest victory book. It's the greatest book you will ever, ever read. Amen. It is an amazing book. It has got an answer to every question. Though sometimes we don't see it or we don't understand it, religion sometimes stops us. But reality, the truth, will make us free. So I pray today that that's what will happen to us. We're going to break free. See, this... The answer is in this book. And this book is not just a, a reading book. It's not just a book that we can uh, read about different people, different women, different men in the Bible, things that they did. It, it's a book to live by. 
It's a story that, that talks about people's lives that have found something dynamic. Paul was, was, was a man of God, but he had the wrong doctrine and the wrong theology. And he had an encounter with God on the road to Damascus that changed his life forever. You see, this book will change our lives forever. Can can do things that nothing else can do. I want you to open up your Bibles, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to have a read a lot of scriptures this morning. Hope you don't mind. But they're simple scriptures. Uh, amazing scriptures. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10. And, as, and it says this. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. God wouldn't have put this in the book. He wouldn't have made these statements if he didn't understand that humanity would have to fight things that come against us. He realizes and he knows that there's an enemy out there and the enemy wants to sow discord. He wants to sow unbelief. He wants to sow worry, concerns, all those sort of things into your life that will stop you from rising above. We talk about a glass ceiling. We talk about trying to rise up, but you hit your head on that ceiling. I want to tell you that the Word of God is real and is true, and Jesus knows everything about us. And He says, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when disobedience is fulfilled. I, I believe that the Word of God is real, it's very, very true, and that God wants us to understand that we belong to Him. He's purchased us with a price. I've been purchased with the precious blood. I've been set free. The, Jesus just didn't purchase us uh, with His blood, but He redeemed us with His mighty Holy Spirit. He's empowered us. He has set us free. He redeemed me by the blood. Now He has set me free and He's filled me with the Holy Spirit. And Romans 8 verse 37 says this. It says, Yet in all these things, whatever it is that's coming against you today, whatever it is that tries to stop you today, whatever it is that gets into your mind, your, the imaginations. You know, sometimes when we sit on our own somewhere and and we start to think negative thoughts come into our mind, and we start to think of perhaps uh, past failures. We might think of something where we've been defeated, or we might feel something there where we've made a mistake. Anybody here ever made a mistake? And, and you know, the enemy plays on these things, and he, and he comes into our mind, and, and, and those things sometimes just grip us and pull us down. And, and as I said, the Word of God has got an answer for every situation that we're in. And though it's very, very simple, and many times we read just the verses and, and we know about it, but somehow or other, God, would you open the Word to us today? Would you anoint the Word in a special way today? God, would you empower the Word in such a special way today that it will come in like a hammer and that it will hit and it will smash every lie that the devil has ever put into my thinking, casting down imaginations and every thought that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. You see, a thought that might come into your life that says you'll never make it, that's something that's trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God because my God says that you will make it. My God says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You see, uh, the Word of God's got to come in and where we start to stand and start to believe that the devil is a liar and that God said, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We have to be immune to the lies of Satan. When I say that, it's when the enemy comes in and says you'll never make it. You, 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 you've got to have little catchphrases, you've got to have little things in your mind. He says you'll never make it or you're no good or this or that. 
want you. You, you just need to stand up and say, thank you. Thank you for that. Because I know that you are the father of lies and that you cannot tell the truth. So if you're saying that I can't make it, you're lying to me. You're lying to me. That means I can make it, hallelujah. That means I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means that I am more than a conqueror, amen. That means, and, and so if you can do that, if you can pull that down, because the enemy comes in to rob, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have it more abundantly. So we have to become immune. We have to become immune to the, to the lies of the devil. He's a filthy liar. Don't give him an inch. If you give the devil an inch, he will want to make himself a ruler. When I was preparing this message, I said, they'll never get that. <laughs> they'll never get But praise God, <laughs> there's somebody here that knows what an inch is. Romans 8, 20 said, 8, 8, 28 says, And we know all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. We know, we know all things. You see, if you don't have something to spring off, you don't have something to jump off when trials come, and you know, the Bible warns us that in the last days there will be perilous times. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. I'm not exempt from being attacked, but when He does come to try to uh, attack me and pull me down and knock me. I've got to know when trials come, when I get a flat tire and I'm in a hurry, I've just got to believe for good. And if I don't have that foundation in my life, the enemy then can run all over me. He can, he can triumph over me. I believe that Jesus wears the victor's crown. He just didn't purchase us with his blood, but he also empowered us with the mighty Holy Spirit. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purposes. Romans 8, 31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? What are you going to say? It's what you say. It's what you say that's going to make a difference in your life. I'd like you to have a quick look at Romans chapter 8 with me. Romans chapter 8. These amazing, very, very simple scriptures, but they're very, very real scriptures. And if we can grasp them and if we can get them inside us, I believe that we can have the victory. We can see the mighty hand of God. It says in verse 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For your sake we are killed all day long and account of the sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principality nor power nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then he goes on in chapter 9, verse 1, and says, I tell you the truth, I'm not lying. This is the truth. This is what God wants for you to know. It's what are you going to say when the enemy comes in? What are you going to say when he, when he comes to, to try to uh, take you out? What are you going to say? It's what we say. What we say. In 1 John 3, 2, it says, Beloved, now we are children of God. You see, I, I've got to say, I'm a child of God. I've been bought with a price. He paid for me with His precious blood. We're children of God. Revelation 12, verse 11, And they, that's us, overcame Him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And they love not their lives to, truth, uh, to, the, to the death, rather. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. Friend, you've got to strengthen yourself. How do I strengthen myself? Reading the Word, praying in tongues, edifying yourself, building yourself up in the most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, is speaking directly to God. Speaking directly to God, words that perhaps you do not know, perhaps you do not understand, but that's how we do it. That's what we do. Abiding in the Word, living a life according to the Word, not according to our circumstances. The truth will make me free. Overcomers. Overcomers are a different breed of people. Overcomers see things through different eyes. The eyes of the Spirit. Romans 4, 17, God calls things that be not as though they were, so can I. What that means is that if a situation that I see in front of me is it, contrary to what the Word of God says, if the enemy is having a, having a shot at me and having a go at me, I can start speaking things that are not in existence right now. I can start to say, devil, you are going to get out of my face. But it may be a financial problem that you're having. It may be some other situation, but you can start speaking and calling things that be not as though they were. And start to speak about yourself and start to say that I am wealthy, I am rich. Let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Hallelujah. God calls those things that be not as though they were. So I have to start to speak. What am I going to say in these circumstances? What am I going to say in these situations? How, how am I going to deal with it? What am I going to do? You see, overcomers see things through different eyes. We've got to see through the eye of the Spirit. God responds to faith, not fear. How many people know that God responds to certain things? He's looking for something. We often say that that that. God or the Holy Spirit needs an atmosphere to come in. He can come in. He can do whatever He likes. But I want to tell you, friends, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. So if you build an atmosphere around your life, an atmosphere of faith, an atmosphere that the Holy Spirit can come in on, instead of being grumbling, moaning, and, and, and just speaking negative about your life, I'll never ever make it. I'll, I'll never be any different. I'll never change. Nothing will change in my life. I'm a failure. I'm defeated. I, I'm a broken person. Blah, blah, blah. Sickness and all this sort of stuff follows me everywhere I go. My Bible says goodness and mercy follows me all the way they go. So it's what are you going to say? How are you going to react to get God to, to come into your situation? And God, let me say it again. God, God says... That, you know, he calls things that be not as though, he was, as though they were. In, in a situation with Abraham where, where his wife was barren, he was 100 years of age, he still spoke about seeing him as a father of many nations. He spoke about a situation that, that seemed impossible, but he's called something that wasn't as though it were. And we've got to start to say, God, you see, I believe that Australia will turn to Christ. I believe for a move of the Spirit, amen. I'm not convinced governments and everybody else are going to just have their way. I believe that Jesus is going to have His way. I, I have to speak like that. I have to believe like that. I believe that God will come and inhabit the praises of His people. i got to believe and i got to confess it, that God is going to touch us this morning, that God is going to meet with us this morning. Friend, it is as useless as an ashtray and a motorcycle coming to church and just coming to church for coming to church sake. I come to church to meet with God. Come to love on Him, amen. I come to... What do I come for? <laughs> what do we come for? Why do you come to church? I'm sure you don't just come to see what sort of shirt I'm going to wear today. You call things that be not as though they were and, and, and you start to believe and give God something to work with. Faith is what God works with. The Bible says when Jesus returns, will he find faith on the earth? He's looking for faith. 
Faith in God can move mountains. Faith in God will change this nation. Faith in God, the church. You see, I believe the church is the soul of the earth. I believe that God is relying on us to rise up, to declare, start to speak, start to share what, what you really, what's really on the inside of us. God calls things that be not as though they were. God responds to faith and not fear. In 1 Samuel 17, 26, and we've just been moving around this story a little bit lately. David said, when he came against a, a, a Goliath, when he saw the Goliath, and, and here he is roaring and ranting, and, and, and his, 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 he had to speak into the circumstance. He had to speak into the situation. See, if he hadn't have spoken there, there would be no more story. There would have been the end. But, but David, uh, David's response was, was, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You know what amazes me today, and I believe it would amaze even God, how people see things differently. We know the story, you know, the glass is either half full or half empty. See, the army of Israel saw Goliath as too big to fight. The hopelessness and negativity and everything else got around them. They just saw him as too big to fight, while David saw him too big to miss. Israel's army heard the roaring voice of the enemy. They lost faith in God. If the church loses faith in God and has faith in our ability, which is where the church is heading today, we are in trouble. We must have our confidence and our faith in God. We must have our faith in Him, nowhere else. The enemy roaring, ranting, they lost faith. Their whole concept of God, they lost faith in God, who had helped them repeatedly in the past. And they saw themselves as hopeless, in a hopeless situation, even as grasshoppers. David, on the other hand, seized the opportunity. <laughs> I tell you what, when the, when the presence of God gets in the place and the anointing and people are shouting and they're singing, you've got to seize the opportunity, amen. Don't just sit there saying, no, what are they doing? No, get into it. <laughs> Don't let your in, that intimate thing that's inside you stop you. Don't let that inferiority inside you stop you. Don't let that shyness stop you. I was, I, that's how I was, but I want to tell you I'm a different person today, amen. Because I realize that no weapon formed against me can prosper. That I have the victory. I am more than a conqueror. I have overcome that thing. I have, I have defeated that thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Is God before me who against me. And here is David. David's there. And, and they hear the enemy, the, the children of Israel heard the roaring voice of the enemy. They lost their faith. God had helped them so many times. Now they're in a helpless situation. But David sees the opportunity that totally transformed his life. He went there as a shepherd boy, but he walked away as a champion warrior. You see, you today, you, you could come into the, a situation with defeat, with negativity, with whatever it might be around your life. But I want to tell you, if you seize the opportunity that's in this house today, you can walk out of this building a champion. You can walk out of this building an overcomer. You can walk out of this building with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You can walk out of this building and be filled with the power of God. You can walk out of this building if you came in sick. You can walk out healed in Jesus' name. Totally transformed his life. Against all the odds, what are you going to say to the situations that arise around you? You know what David said? I'll fight him. <laughs> See, that, that's the t thing that we've got to... Today, 
oh, I'm shy, or I'm this, or I'm that. No, you've got to get, what changes something is you start to say, that thing, yeah, I don't deny that it's there, but I'm going to fight the thing. I'm going to pull its power. I'm going to, I'm going to take it on against all odds. I, I'm, I'm, not going to, I'm not going to play second fiddle to this thing any longer. I'm not going to let it control me any longer. I, I, I believe in God. I believe that God has given us victory. If, if I don't, David would have said, if I don't fight him, he will be my master. That's what he said. You will serve me. You will serve me. And I want to say too many Christians are serving negativity, failure and defeat around their lives. We wonder why the world outside doesn't really want a bar of us. I want to tell you, if we got the Holy Ghost and the power of God and started living in victory, started to live a victorious life, I said it before, most Christians need to, if they want to wake up with a smile in the morning, got to put a coat hanger in their mouth. Many look like they've had the baptism of lemon juice. Man, the joy of the Lord is my strength, amen. You've got you to put on, put on Jesus. But you see, if you don't fight it, it will be your master and you will serve it all the days of your life. You might find yourself in a position of hopelessness, no way out. Today could be the day to slay your giant. Today could be the day to rise up and slay your enemy. See, overcomers run towards their enemies. They don't run away from the fight. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Do you believe that today? The, the armies of Israel ran to their caves and to their tents in fear. But David went and picked up five smooth stones from the book and ran towards his enemy. <laughs> ran towards the enemy. Took him on, I mean, frightened the living daylights out of him. <laughs> to break fear and intimidation and become an overcomer, we must possess an unshakable mindset. Unshakable mindset. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. You've got to build this into your mindset. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me can prosper. Every tongue that rises me in I rise up and I condemn it. It's what you say to that thing. If you take it on board and dress it and nurse it and love it, it will be your master. But if you can kill it, you can be its master. Amen. Breakthrough. You've got to, you've got to have a Christ-minded mindset. You've got to develop a Christ-minded mindset. Reinhard Bonnke said, We are not the hunters. Sorry, we are not the hunted, but we are the hunters. Turn to somebody and say that today. I am not the hunted. I am, a, I am the hunters. I'm one of the hunters. <laughs> Ephesians 1 it says, What is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? That's faith. According to the mighty power you have been filled with. According to his mighty power. You see, you've been filled with with the greatest power on earth. How many people remember the story about the stick? It must be a good preacher. You remember everything I say. I went in and I bought a stick from Bunnings. That it was supposed to be a rose tree. But all I got was a stick. It had no roses on it. It had no leaves on it. It had nothing on it. It was just a stick. And if I left that stick on the shelf, that's all it would have had. In another six months, I would have had a dry stick. <laughs> 
But you see, when you place that stick in the right environment, all of a sudden, after a few days, leaves started to grow. Then after a while, little branches started to come out. Then after a little while, the rose came on the end of those branches. Beautiful smelling roses that were in that stick all the time. You see, what is in you now is in you now. You have got victory inside you now. You have got the greater one living in you now. You've got everything that you need in you now. All you need is to be planted in the right environment. All you need is to build that environment around your life where it's positive and not filled with negative people, not filled with people that want to pull you down, tell you you'll never make it. My dad was a, was a great one. He, he, you know, he, he, he never ever come and watched me, never ever saw anything, but he had an opinion. He told me, he said, I wasn't a, a sprinter. He didn't have a clue. I become the junior champion of Mount Isa, sprinting. He came to watch me play football one day. One day he came and what, what, I played on the wing. That day I scored three tries. But as far as he was concerned, I couldn't play football. The last try I scored, they, they said, you might as well kick it. So I, I'd never kicked a goal before in my life, but I, I put the thing up there and I acted like as if I could kick. I looked like a kicker. I never kicked the goal before in my life. I got my thing. You'd be amazed what you can do if you allow what is in you to have a go, amen? I must admit, it wasn't from the sideline. <laughs> it was right in front. I could have thrown it over. But when you're with a, in a bit of a crowd and, you know, you can get intimidated. You can think, oh, man, I'm going to make a fool of myself. Oh, oh, oh people all think, oh. No, I just scored three tries, hallelujah. Now I'm going to kick this thing. Some of you are going to need to get in front of the mirror. <laughs> now, come on, I'm not joking. Get in front of the mirror and, and come on, I can do that. I can do that because you know why? Because the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it, amen, if I have a go. But if I don't have a go, you'll never, never know. That's the secret of success. David said, I'll fight him. I'll, I'll do it. If I don't, he will be my master. And the Bible says in Romans 1.19, it says, And what is that exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the mighty power, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked through Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand, far above principalities and powers and dominion and might and everything that would try to exalt itself above the name of God. That's where we're seated today. Why don't we just sit there? Don't get off the shelf. Get off the shelf and become what God wants you to become. Amen. Stick. I think I've said enough. The, the, look, this was my introduction. <laughs> oh, gee. how many people love Jesus? You shut your eyes with me for a moment. Is there anybody here this morning? And you might feel like you're a stick on that shelf. You may not have realized the potential on the inside of you. You might not realize what, what God can do through you and in you. So many things that can get your life in that. Maybe somebody here that is saying, I, man, I, I'm, I'm no good. I'm, God wouldn't want me. God wouldn't want me. 
I want to tell you, God, the Lord loves you so much. He wants you. He wants to be able to put his loving arms around you. He wants to touch you and meet with you in, in a special way. Before we go any further today, is there anybody here and you've never given your life to Christ? You've never, ever asked Jesus to come into your life. Or perhaps you did a long time ago, but today it doesn't really mean a lot to you. Or perhaps you're not real sure where you stand with God. But you're in this house today and something started to touch you a little bit. Something started to get around your life a little bit. You might want to know more. The only way you can find more is if you give your life to Him. That's the door. You walk through the door. You walk into something. You walk, but if you're outside, you'll never ever know. You'll never ever, ex never, ever experience what, it was, what it's like. That restaurant, you might smell the, the flavor of the food being cooked. You might smell it on the outside and Today you might smell something that, man, these people seem happy or they this or that, whatever it might be. I'd like a little bit of that. You'll never know what it tastes like unless you walk into that restaurant, unless you go in there, and you'll never really know what Jesus is like unless you open the door and allow him to come into your life. Just right now while we're here with our heads bowed, our eyes closed, and if you're like that this morning, would you just quickly slip up your hand and say, that's me this morning. I want to, I want to know this Jesus. I want, to, I want him to come into my life. I want him to help me. I want him, I want him to be my friend. I, I, want, I want his power in my life. I, I want to know him. Quick, if that's you, quickly slip up your hand. You'd know by now. Bless you, sir. Is there anybody else in this place right now? Anybody else in this house right now? You're not sure where you stand with God. You're not real, real sure where you stand. Would you, would you allow him? Would you, would you let him touch you today? Glory to God. Sir, I'm so thrilled. Would you like to stand for a minute? I want to pray with you, mate. You need to let the Holy Ghost get around your life. To rise up today. Start the fight. Start the fight. <laughs> Who is, how dare this thing come against my life? How dare this thing come and attack me? How dare this thing come to defy the army? How dare try to break this, the, the, the gift of God in my life? There's a lot of people that are gifted, got amazing gifts in your life, but they're laying dormant. Let the power of God come again over your life. Let the anointing come again over your life. There's some people here this morning, you need, you need to, to allow the anointing to touch you again. You, you need to let the Spirit of God touch you again. You need to let the fire of God touch you again. You were on fire. You knew the power. You knew the anointing. You, but you've allowed the enemy to come in and say, you must have used by date. I ought to tell you, God, there is no use by date. Amen. No use by date. Today you can find victory. You can find power. You can find the anointing. You can find the answers to life. Let's just stand to our feet today. Let's stand to our feet. Let the Spirit of God... Why don't you ask God this morning? Why don't you ask God, God, do I need to respond this morning? Are you game to ask the Lord that question? Are you game to say, God, do I need to respond? Do I need to open my heart? Do I need, do I need, do I need something this morning? Somebody in this building and, and uh, I can't write down. And it's like floaters. I think they call them floaters in your eye like little black things that are twirling around. There's somebody like that here. I want to pray for you this morning. The Lord spoke to us this morning in the prayer meeting. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And we're going to believe for healing this morning. If you, if you need healing in your body this morning, I want you to quickly come out the front and let believe God this morning. You need healing. You need a touch from God. Have you got that thing around you in your eye? Yeah, amen. <laughs> okay, just look to Jesus, my friend. Let, let it go. Let it be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you're, you said in your word that you're the Lord that healeth me. And my God, for my brother here right now, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to loosen that thing. Release it from him now. Release it from him. 
Loosen him in Jesus' name. Every little thing, those whatever you call them things, floaters, those things, go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Go, on, go home with a song in your heart. Go home with a smile on your dial. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, mate. The best is yet to come. Go home with a song in your heart. Go home with a confession. Go home saying how great God is. That I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The devil's a liar and defeated me. The cheat. The God before me who can be against me. Amen.